Evening, everyone. Welcome to our fourth night of prayer. We really do hope that you've been blessed and encouraged across this week as you've maybe spent some time praying by yourself, but doing that knowing you're praying alongside others in our church family. You've probably already seen uh, that our theme tonight is Pray Well for Community. And so we want to do that across this evening. Spend some time not just praying for the communities in which we live, but also praying for some of the ministries in our church here in Wellington that are involved in reaching out and helping others in the local community. But before we do that, we want to listen to a song of worship that some of our young people have recorded. It's based on Psalm 23, and I'd love us just to listen to it to settle our hearts and our minds, to get rid of all distractions and just focus in on God this evening. So let's listen to that song.
So our theme for today is Pray Well for Community. And so to begin with tonight, we want to spend some time praying for the ministries in our church that are involved in reaching out to the community around us. I want to specifically pray for two ministries. First one we want to pray for is our Restory ministry. That's our furniture ministry here in church. You maybe have had a chance to watch uh, the interview with Jim Winters on our church website. If you haven't, I'd really encourage you to go and listen to him share a wee bit about his story and involvement within that ministry. But we also want to spend some time praying for our food ministry, which is called Helping Hands. And in order for us to be informed of how to pray tonight, I caught up a couple of weeks ago with Erin and Heather to hear a wee bit about the ministry they're involved in. So Restory is a furniture ministry in church and it began um, in September 2019 um, and it was a very clear call of God um, that he wanted us to, to begin this ministry and basically as Jim has already shared that we accept uh, second-hand furniture and we give a, a new lease of life if it needs one and then we give it out to people in the community who are in need who have maybe contacted us um, and we we look at those needs and see if we can meet them with what we have in store at the minute. So on the back of the start of the Restory Ministry, and I suppose primarily because um, I work with vulnerable people, um, and that would be getting them housed in the community benefits, that sort of thing, I saw the growing need for a food ministry to complement what Erin had already started. So after speaking to Erin, we we got together and we decided right, we'd, that we'd set up Helping Hands alongside Restory. And basically this is um, where we can give people a helping hand at a time of crisis with food. We got going around October, November 2019. And did, did we know that four months thereafter we would be going into the first lockdown? And Helping Hands has gone beyond anything I ever could have imagined. Not only have our own people been experienced the joy of giving to the food store and financially, but we've also been supported um, by Henderson Spa Group. We get from the deliveries from the local spa from the, their food bank donations. But also more recently we've been linked in with Marks and Spencer's Neighbourly Programme and we get food from the store three times a week for distribution um, in the local community. So we're now linked in with four hospital facilities and a number of families in the town. And also ongoing is our meals programme where we, we weekly do deliveries to some of our senior members from our church family here. So in the past uh, year and a half, Restory has really um, changed direction in many ways. Um, at the start, we weren't sure how it was going to go because we were very aware it was, um, it was God's idea from the beginning. So it's not like we went into it with a vision of how it was going to look particularly but um, at the very beginning we were able to link in with um, connections from Heather from Triangle Housing and and then basically it was word of mouth from there where social workers would start to contact us um, with their clients who maybe needed a wee bit of a hand um, and from there we've had um, contacts with Sure Start and Women's Aid and the Simon community all of which are really supportive of us and we try to help out as best we can. So obviously as Heather said then the first lockdown hit and with restrictions that would have prevented us maybe doing um, our usual amount of work where we were allowed to go into homes. Um, but at the very beginning, before restrictions really kicked off, we, I remember we did two or three complete house moves, um, which were big jobs. And um, it was amazing to see how the church got really behind us at that stage. And a few text messages later, we had a whole list of, of needs met um, by people just dropping things into the church office. And literally entire households were um, were provided for um, at that time, which was such a blessing to us to see how God's church um, can work together and be united in, in helping others. Um, this lockdown has been a wee bit trickier um, because we aren't allowed to go into the houses, but we've still been able to do a wee bit of emergency work here and there. Um, and we look forward probably till restrictions are lifted and we can really start to meet um, many, many needs that are still out there. Definitely, um, there still is a big need and of course I recognise the need to exercise wisdom and, and discernment in the ministry and we certainly aren't there to just distribute food of people. Our under seat 
of sufficient means to buy food. Some may, some may choose to spend their money on things other than food and would maybe see us as a way to supplement their income, but that is not certainly not what we are about. But there is an ever growing amount of people and they're in poverty and they're living on the bread, bread line and universal credit has not been, been good to them and, that, and they're actually short of money now. Helping Hands is who we are and we are providing that helping hand and as Christians I believe we're called to give to those who can't help themselves at this present time. Um, if I could just share with you briefly, two days ago I got a phone call from a social worker and she was telling me just during the course of our conversation about why children had to be taken out of the family home and put into the temporary care of other relatives. And there was there's no money forthcoming at minute because they're sorting out benefits. So there was a real need to go into that family situation and give them a helping hand with food. And um, so yesterday I went along and I actually have the email here from the social worker thanking Wellington. Massive thank you to Wellington for the food we gave X this morning. She was blown away with her generosity as it was a social worker and she heard what was provided and it was gratefully received and and we have no idea how much it will help this family in our current crisis. Um, I think to answer the question of is, is there always going to be a need, um, none of us will know the need coming out of um, of COVID and the repercussions of that and how a lot of families maybe who never find themselves in a position um, of having to ask for help maybe have found themselves in that position and it is it's really humbling to be able to to try and meet those needs in whichever way we can with the food ministry and even with furniture if it came to that um, and I think it's it's something that's always going to be with us and I think as a church it's something that we later on tonight maybe need to pray about how we are used in that way and how how we make ourselves available as a church um, to try and meet more of the, the needs around us. Um, so we see a theme through the Bible uh, where God constantly seeks out the one that is left behind and the one who is marginalised. Um, and obviously we, we know that Jesus was always championing the underdog and befriending those who maybe other people wouldn't have um, and maybe those most in need. And right back into Genesis 16 where Hagar was used and, and sent away by Sarah and Abraham at that time, um, God sought her out and the Bible actually says God went to her and found her where she was and and told her to go back. And it's the first time we hear God being um, mentioned as the one who sees, the God who sees, El Roy. And um, I think it's our prayer and we're going to be praying in a wee while that um, us as a church family will really seek after what God wants us to do and that what we do um, through Heather and her team and the Restory team even in the small acts of kindness that um, these people will see there is a God who who seeks them out and who sees their situation and, and wants to help them and, and maybe change the course of, of their lives. I feel that um, reaching out to others, that's the centre of who we are and what we do in Wellington. I know this has to be balanced with good governance, but I see the hand of God at work in so many ways as we have just been given so many opportunities, building relationships and the opportunities we've been given to share the good news. It's not my ministry. We have a team of helpers here and both Three Story and Healthy Hands. It's a team effort and it's not about the team, but this is God's ministry. We are all called to give and to help those in need. We're currently doing a study in James and this is so timely where we learn that we are all accountable for how we use what we have and our generosity and love shown to those in need. Um, if I could just finish by saying a few years ago, Jeff and I were abroad on holiday and we went to a local church. And on leaving that church, we exited the car park and right at the entrance on the gate was a sign, you're now entering the mission field. And I believe that so much for what we do here in Wellington whether it's a piece of furniture or a bag of food going out, but we're, we're going out to reach out to others, to show them God's love in a practical way. Um, a few years ago, Jeff and I were on holiday and we, 
We visited a local church and on leaving there was a sign as we exited the car park and it said you are now entering the mission field and that has always stuck with us and we often think of that sign and as we go out and exit the car park in Wellington to go out into the community to others it may only be 200 yards down the road but we are going into a mission field and it's just a privilege to be able to reach out to others and show God's love in action. So prayer points, um, we'd ask you just to pray firstly for those people that we meet, um, whether it be with food or with furniture, and pray for the team involved too, that, that um, God will always just allow us to know when to be quiet and when to, to speak and when somebody maybe needs more of a listening ear. Um, and ultimately just pray that the, the people that we come in contact with will encounter God and know that he loves them and has a plan for them and that even he'll just use these small acts of kindness that we're involved in um, in a much greater plan that he is in control of. Secondly, I would just love us to pray as a church uh, to listen for God's voice and for what he wants us to do both individually and collectively. Um, we are a united church body but also we're made up of individual people with different circumstances and, and different lives that we lead and just pray even now and on a daily basis that God will just open up opportunities for you and for us um, to just be aware of his spirit's leading whenever we meet and come in contact with people in our lives and that we as a church will prioritise um, compassion ministries and really just um, carry out that great commission as well to reach others for him through this um, particular means. And then thirdly just pray that we would have a real undivided heart when it comes to um, serving others. And I think so often as a church, we want to be so clear on where God is guiding us. And sometimes I wonder, um, is God just asking us to seek after him? And when we continue to do that, we start to imitate Christ and we start to know what he wants us to do. And everything else that we're wondering about and, and questioning about is always answered through the filter of what does God want us to do and what would his heart be for for our lives and, and how does that fit into the compassion ministries and looking out for other people. Um, so now as we go into a time of prayer, I just would love us to focus on those, those main three things. Thanks to Erin and Heather uh, for sharing with us tonight. We're gonna to spend some time just praying for our Helping Hands and Restory Ministries here in church. And at the end of that prayer time, Liz is gonna finish us off in prayer.
Dear Lord, we thank you that in your word you remind us that we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God prepared in advance for us to do. Help us, Lord, to grasp what that means. We thank you, Lord, for your love for us and for your goodness and provision. Whilst lockdown has been very difficult for so many people, we thank you, Lord, for all the good things that have happened during lockdown. We thank you that during lockdown, you have encouraged many to help others by providing furniture or food or just by keeping in touch to check how they're doing. Give us the compassion and empathy we need to understand what those in our community are going through. Help us to love them well and come alongside them to offer support and to be your hands and feet. We thank you for all who have already been reached by our Helping Hands ministry. We pray that they will experience support and love which will impact their lives for eternity. Help them to feel loved and welcomed by the church family, amongst which they will find friendship, comfort and trust. And as we prepare to return to the church building to worship you, help us to remember that your church is the people. I pray that we will have a greater desire to serve you and as we do, people will see something of you in us. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The second thing I'd love us to spend some time praying for tonight as we think about this theme of prayer well for community is the communities in which we live. Why not spend some time praying for your neighbours, local businesses that you know could really do with some prayerful support at this time. Continue to pray for health service, our police service, our fire service. Why not even spend some time praying for our local schools? Just pray for whatever it is God places in your heart when you think about the topic of praying well for community. And then at the end of our prayer time, Nigel's going to lead us in prayer. Our Father, we give you thanks that we can come together as a church family in this special week of prayer. And tonight, Lord, just as our focus is on community, I would like to bring before you, Lord, our, our business community. Lord, we just acknowledge it has been a tough year for many. We see our town with most of the shops closed. It has been a year of uncertainty, a year where the unknown has caused stress and worry for business owners, for managers and for the staff, many of whom are still on furlough. But Lord, we just give you thanks for the skills of our medical profession. We thank you that a vaccine rollout is well underway. We also thank you, Lord, for our government who helped businesses as best they could. And our Father, we just thank you that we see maybe things starting to come back to normal. Our Father, we thank you that this week we have seen children come back to school our Father, it has been a year of upheaval for our education system and we just pray for our teachers and we pray for our pupils. 
And we pray, Lord, that they will get back to a more normal school life. Our Father, we realise that the pandemic has touched many lives. People have lost loved ones. Many have suffered physically and mentally and spiritually. But Lord, we give you thanks that you're a God who, who loves us. You're a God who will come and meet with each of us at our point of need. Our Father, just forgive us when we took our eyes off you. Lord, our focus should be on Christ. And so often, Lord, we, we lost focus of that. And that robbed of us our peace and joy. Our Father, we thank you that you are a God who is in control. And we thank you that your scripture tells us that if our hope is in the Lord, we will renew our, he will renew our strength. We will soar on wings like eagles. We'll run and not grow weary. We'll walk and not be faint. Our Father, we just thank you for that truth. And our Father, we just thank you that each and every one of us, Lord, has been placed in our communities. We've been placed there to serve you. And Lord, what a witness it would be if people would look at us and see that our hope is in the Lord and that we run and don't grow weary. We walk and will not faint. Our Father, we thank you for our fellowship here. We thank you for our compassion ministries. We thank you for our furniture ministry and our food ministry. But Father, each and every one of us has a role to play. And our Father, we just pray that we would keep our eyes focused on you and not let the pressures of the world weary us. And Father, if that was the case, we would be such a witness to all that we meet. And we just ask, Lord, that you would give us the strength and the grace to live for you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you to Liz and Nigel for leading us in prayer. And thank you for joining us tonight as we spend some time praying well for our communities. And I'd love you to keep doing that. Keep praying for the community in which you live in and keep praying for ministries in our church, such as Restory and Helping Hands, that are focused and reaching out and helping others. I'm just going to pray to finish tonight and then I'm going to leave you with a song that Aaron and some others have recorded. And I'd love you to just listen to the words of that song and reflect on them as we finish this evening. So let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you for community. I thank you for our church community and how amazing it is to support and encourage one another. But God, I just want to thank you for the communities that you've called us to live within. You've instructed us to go and to share you and your love with everyone that we meet. And so God, help us to do that faithfully. Help us to do that as best that we can each and every day. And as we finish our prayer time tonight, God, I pray that it wouldn't be the end of us praying well for community. Praying well for those around us that we know need our prayers and need you to intervene in their lives. Lord, give us a passion to pray daily and a hunger to love and to support our neighbor as you have called us to do. In your son's name, amen.
the Father's love. Let all my life tell who you are, and the wonder of your never-ending love. Let all my life tell of who you are. That you're wonderful and such a good father. Let all my life tell of who you are And the wonder of your never-ending love Let all my life tell of who you are That you're wonderful and such a good father You are wonderful and such a good father Help me to love with open arms like you do A love that erases all the lines and sees the truth Oh, that when they look in my eyes they would Just a smile, they would feel the Father's love. Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see. Just a smile, they would feel.